I want to introduce and give him an opportunity to make some remarks. Uh, Todd Braystead, who's uh, seated beside me here, is probably the greatest military historian of the revolution in Bergen County that is not only uh, living, but perhaps has ever lived. <laughs> His uh, research goes into um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> still to give you here a, an overview. Is that okay, Todd? Sure, why not? We're here. Um, first off, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Jim. Um, before we start, there's a lot of faces in this crowd I've never seen before. Raise your hand if you've never been here before. All right, look at that. Welcome, everybody. Um, welcome to Historic Newbridge Landing. And as Kevin has mentioned, this is a battlefield. It's a greater Newbridge area. And we discuss Newbridge. We're not just talking about the bridge itself, the physical structure, but a geographic area around here, all right, within you know, a mile or so. This this is Newbridge, right? Most of you folks probably live in Bergen County. You know, we have over 70 towns in Bergen County, and that's just the truncated Bergen County. In the American Revolution, there was no Hudson County. That was all Bergen County. There was no Passaic County. A good chunk of that was also Bergen County. And in Bergen County in 1776, there were six townships. Six townships, not 70 plus towns. Or right? places like Paramus and Kloster were geographic areas, all right? They're not towns with mayors and councils and things like that. So six townships, boy, wouldn't that be uh, interesting today? <laughs> but the American Revolution, you know, is a, you could look at it as a microcosm right here. It envelops, encompasses everything that was the American Revolution. And from our study of the war, that means it was a civil war. Here in Bergen County and throughout America itself, this is the home of John Zabriskie, Jan Zabriskie, if you want to go uh, to his original roots. But John Zabriskie was a loyalist, all right? What is a loyalist? A loyalist is someone who preferred the British as opposed to the new revolutionary government. No, well, why would someone become a loyalist. Well, look at it from the flip side, okay? When you folks woke up this morning, did you get out of bed and stretch your arms and go, I'm going to obey all the laws of the country today? <laughs> no, who would do that? That's stupid, all right? Um, you get out of bed and you just go about your daily lives and you obey all the laws of the United States except perhaps April 15th, but we're not going there. Um, and for loyalists in 1775, 1776, they too were simply going about their daily lives, obeying the laws of the government. And that's where it gets murky. Well, who is the government? The government up until that time had been the royal government under King George III and Parliament. Right? When, and that's what's, that's what's so interesting. England at the time, you know, the depiction of King George III as some despotic monarch, the British government was the most liberal government of Europe at the time. You look at Prussia, Austria, France, Sweden, Spain. Uh, those are all divine right monarchies. All right? Those are really um, authoritarian uh, kingdoms. The British government had parliamentary representation, and that extended over here in America through uh, provincial assemblies. Each colony had a royal governor. Uh, anybody know who New Jersey's last royal governor was? Franklin. Franklin. William Franklin, who was Ben Franklin's son. And Franklin Township, Bergen County, named after William Franklin. All right, so that's the thing. You have you have a royal government, and then all of a sudden that's thrown away, and a new government takes over. And where does that government get its legitimacy from? That's the problem. That is the root of the conflict, and that all stems from. You can look at it. This house. All right, a loyalist lives here, right across the bridge. As we're going to go over certainly later the home of Abraham Van Buskirk, Bergen County's 
leading loyalist. And if you want to look at, again, a Civil War aspect, his wife, who remarried in around 1770, was Jane Dye. Jane Dye was the daughter of Tunis Dye. Tunis Dye, if you go to the Dye Mansion in Wayne, was the colonel of the Bergen County militia, ergo Bergen County's leading wit, Bergen County's leading rebel. So you have his daughter married to Bergen County's leading loyalist. That must have made for some interesting Thanksgiving Day dinners. <laughs> so that is really at the root of this conflict. And this strategic neck of this bridge here, the close point, crossing point of the Hackensack, is what makes everything so much fun and so interesting here. So you have this root of this conflict. You have the Americans here to start. You have the British then coming in. And after that, from really January of 1777 on, this is an area that is on what they call on the lines. Right? The British are in New York City. The Americans, as we've really researched and determined, are trying to keep a day's march away from the British. All right? And you look at the endurance of how far someone can march, fully loaded, three layers of wool, cartridge box, haversack, bayonet, canteen, knapsack, you know, all that, you know, 11 pound musket, how far can that person march out to here and march back in one day and fight a battle? And the Americans determined it's generally around the area of Paramus. So between Paramus and New York is an area that is going to be in conflict. And that's what this area is all about, conflict. So we'll discuss some of the incidents uh, once we get outside, give you a little grasp of what happened here from 1776, basically until 1781. The last actual skirmish that happened around here uh, was at the end of July, 1781. A, raid, a very interesting raid um, on the New Milford side of Newbridge. So anything else, Kevin, or shall we get started?